As men, God has a high calling on our lives. And unfortunately, most of us men have not really been trained and guided in how to live that out. So we do the best we can, and many of us have made errors in that pathway, either as husbands, as fathers. Um, life is tough. So what I'm going to paint a picture of here is some of the background as to why this is important, men's ministry is important, and why it's important to you. So to get started, I want to just refer to Proverbs 27, 17. Everybody's probably familiar with that, and that's basically, as iron sharpens iron, so does one man sharpen another. So when we look at the ultimate blade here, the chainsaw, sometimes I think that's what most men think of as they need to be this powerful man. And it's true. We do want to have control. We want to have power. But in reality, you know, most of us are more like this axe here. And um, sometimes we might try to live out life like a hammer. It doesn't work out so well. And then sometimes our, our life can be like this axe head without a handle. Found this out in the woods. It's got mud on it. It's got rust. And at one time was a useful axe. And now it's kind of lost its way, so to speak. But all it would take would be a new handle and some work on this thing, and it would be just as good as new. The steel is still steel. And I don't know what your life is like, but somewhere in the mix your story is found. My opening slide, I think, really summarizes why I believe men's ministry is so important. And that is that it's all about building stronger men, you and me. And as we become stronger men, as we become more effective tools in God's hand, then we're going to build a better family, better marriages. And of course, that's the backbone of the church. Much of what we see in society today is men being a little bit derelict on the duty. So it really is important for all of us men to reflect on our lives and say, okay, Lord, how do I get moving in a direction? And so that's what we're going to look at here next. So in this outline here, I want to just kind of go through a sequence. Every man has a story, has a journey. Um, we all have problems, and we reach crises in our lives. And there are solutions, which is a strong, being a strong man of God. And Blueprint for Men, the ministry that I represent, is all about developing systems to build us as men. And the vision is to expand this horizon either as we uh, become better leaders. We're going to reach out to others. And then also, maybe you're a pastor. I especially want to speak to any pastors or elders in churches and just say, this is what we need more than anything. We need people that are in leadership position to step forward and say, I want to make a difference in the lives of the men in my church. The manhood journey, this verse here to me summarizes this whole idea. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. So if we want to be on the right path, of course, we need to trust in the Lord. And most of us, this is just speaking from my own past, most of us as men, we may read a devotional, we go to church, but our spiritual life many times is not what it should be. And so that foundational aspect is what's missing on most men's journey. I ask these questions, and these can be uh, looked at here in a little bit more detail if you freeze the screen, but I ask guys to rate themselves, and you can rate yourself, on these 10 different aspects of life. And as men go through this and they evaluate deficits strengths and weaknesses in their lives, they realize that there are holes. There are reasons why most men struggle. It's not random. I don't know if you ever heard of the book Story Brand, but it was written by Donald Miller a few years ago, and I like this simplistic way of looking at men's ministry. Basically, we have a character, which is you and me, any other man, and he has a problem. And I don't know of any man that doesn't have a problem, and ultimately, in a story, any classic story, he has to meet a guide. There's some man that comes into his life, usually an older man, 
and he's got a plan. He's got an idea of how to give them a better path. But from what I've experienced is most guys are missing these relationships. But if they do exist, he's going to call them to action. And if he, this character takes this new path, it's going to lead to success. There's going to be better outcomes. But without this individual, you, me, whoever, uh, that person's life is going to probably continue to struggle. So what we see today is a breakdown in the family, a breakdown in social order. There's not much mentoring going on. And so our young men, as they grow up, they, they basically don't know how to be men. So we've got a manhood crisis. First thing is men are increasingly secular. We know that. I'm not going to get into any statistics here, but these are all just generally true. Men are increasingly disconnected in marriage. Even the marriages that are strong are not as strong as we would like. We find ourselves on our handheld devices and at restaurants, you know, it's, it's like we don't engage like we should. Children, because of the breakdown of the family, are increasingly disconnected from their parents. And strange as it may sound, studies show that over the last 30 years, the testosterone levels of men have been decreasing. Now, there are reasons probably for that, but it is a fact. More boys are struggling in school than ever before with ADHD and so on. Boys are meant to be active and to run around. And so early on, they are labeled as having struggles learning. Uh, they're living in a woman's world, and yet they are boys. And so without feeling good about school and their progress there, many boys are set up for pathways of destruction and addiction. Men are increasingly addicted. Many of our young men are not maturing. They're not adulting well. And uh, there's actually a term for it, uh, boys who shave, extended adolescence. Um, we all have young men in our life that might fit that description, not all. And here's a really interesting one as well, is young men many times are not being taught how to, how to use tools, how to do basic things that make them feel competent. And so this picture kind of illustrates that. Men are lacking manly skills. Not all men, but many. And then... Ultimately, without God in your life, without purpose and direction, depression comes along, the isolation, and just continues. So why are men struggling? To me, this slide summarizes why, in five points, why men are struggling. Maybe you're struggling. First of all, most of us don't have a good walk with God. We don't know how to do that, or we don't do that. So... Men's ministry primarily is helping guys establish that. Also, knowledge and discipline. What does it mean to be a godly man? We've got to understand what that is and develop the disciplines. Guidance and leadership. Most of us guys, we may not have had a father that actually spoke wisdom in our life. We may not have other men in our life. We're isolated. and Without guidance and leadership, we're destined to make unnecessary mistakes. Also, Probably one of the most interesting things that I'm working on that I will appeal to you guys later is how can we as men have better planning, better goal setting that affect the eternal things, our family, our marriage, our health. And then finally, brotherhood and accountability, which I think is the cornerstone of men's ministry. So when I would take people into the outdoors, I like to make this comparison because I think it's a good one. That is, in outdoor risk management, there's mountains, there's people. When people without training or equipment go into a dangerous environment, there is a, a greater and greater overlap called the accident potential. Same thing happens with men. If we have men, we live in a sexualized world, beautiful women, both in the pixelated form as well as in the flesh. And then we have men that are going through struggles in a marriage. They haven't been equipped. They don't have what to do. They ignore things or they overreact. Anyway, without the proper mentoring and guidance and skills, again, accident potential of divorce. And we could go into many different areas, but you get the point. So the solution is building strong men of God. So this is where we're going. What are traits of strong men of God? Well, I've come up with seven and all my studies and, 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 you know, this could be all over the place. But I think that the first one here is the most important, guys, and that is to reject passivity. Men, we are 
We can be super excited about a football game or about something totally random, fishing, hunting, golf, you name it, but are we passive in areas that have eternal significance? And I would say many times that is true. And as I reject passivity, I have to accept responsibility. I've got to know what that really is. And out of that, I can lead, I can love, and I can live with integrity. This is a big one. Who I say I am. If I say I am a Christian man, I am a Seventh-day Adventist Christian man, am I really living it out with integrity? Or do I have some dark areas in my heart? And out of that will be coming serving humbly and ultimately investing eternally. Some of the greatest quotes within our church from Ellen White, men of integrity, I believe, the greatest one of the world, the one of men, men who will not be bought or sold, men who are true and honest. You guys probably know this quote, but it really makes us feel compelled to respond. I want to be such a man. And this needs to live out in the home. This man here having family devotions, this is a powerful statement as well. Strong family leaders are wanted. The greatest evidence of the power of Christianity that can pre be presented to the world is a well-ordered, well-disciplined family. This will recommend the truth as nothing else can, for it is a living witness of its practical power upon the heart. So it's not about some big evangelistic series. It's about a well-ordered, well-disciplined family. That is the greatest evidence of all. So I'm back to the original slide. The most important ministry in the church is men's ministry, in my opinion, because men that are strong will build strong families that build strong churches. So how do we get there, guys? It's nice to talk about it, but how do we get there? Well, I believe that there are specific things that need to be in place. We need events to, to pull us together. We need small groups. We need to have relationships with other brothers. We need to have leaders developed. We've got to have resources and curriculum. And for those that are leading, we need to provide some support for them as well. So events can be seminars and training, conventions, retreats, outdoor recreation, adventure, men's prayer breakfast, father-son, father-daughter retreats. These would be some examples. This fall, we have a men's retreat, as we always do. It's October 2 through 4, 2020. And we're calling Ignite Men's Conference. We sponsor with this with the South Atlantic Conference. We've got Richie Halverson that's going to speak, be speaking, Ivor Myers, and this is at Cahutta Springs Conference Center, our very own nearby here. What do people say about these events? Most of these people leave events feeling very blessed. This is a testimony from a father, from a father-son retreat, just the brotherhood that develops with other men. Small groups, we've got within our conference, we really push for men to know what is it to be a godly man. We call that manhood education. We've got discipleship groups where we really learn to read the Bible again for our own self, not reading some scripted things, but to, to read the Bible and to journal and to pray, to memorize scripture. When was the last time that you memorized scripture? We need to do that, guys. And then also, as we go through this stuff, we realize, you know, we've got some brokenness. Statistics are that 70% of you that I'm talking to are struggling with some level of sex addiction. Pornography is killing us. If we do not address this in our lives, guys, we're going to be ineffective in much of what we want to do in the spiritual realm. So every church I would like to propose that there is at least some direction from leadership where guys can go to get help. So over time, our small groups have increased manhood education, recovery, and discipleship. The education that we're working on is for the different stages of life, early adulthood up to the age of 24, characterized by identity. The next step, 25 to 44, is the strength of your life. We call that the bondstone stage. And then we have keystone, which is 45 to 64, the stage I'm in, and that's characterized by influence. And then capstone, is characterized by wisdom. That's your last stage of life where you have so much wisdom to give. And then specialized training needs to be given for marriage and fatherhood and much more. So these are things that are going to be more available in the days to come. 
another testimony from a woman. And guys, I'm telling you, if you don't have a testimony from a woman, you don't have anything, right? So this one here is a very shortened version, but it says, I want to praise the Lord for this ministry and what it has done for my husband. Thank you. So men, if our women are testifying that we have a changed life, that's the gold standard. Discipleship, walking with God, Bible study, memorization, journaling, meditation, prayer, overcoming repetitive sin, discipleship curriculum. These are all things we provide. And to me, this illustration here is, I, I just get excited about this slide because really men's ministry is men's discipleship. So if this is Jesus, Peter, James, John, and these would be the other nine disciples, this is the system that Jesus established that really is the foundation of men's ministry. In my mind, one man that's older, that has three other men that he's discipling. Over a period of several years, these guys become equipped. They disciple other men, and so it goes. If you go 18 cycles, do the math, 18 cycles of this sequence in just that many se sequences, it will be enough to disciple the whole world. So doing big church events and stuff, that's great. But this is where the church needs to focus its energy. And this is where men's ministry is doing the greatest work. Recovery, again, we've got a lot of sex addiction groups. Confidentiality is really important. Weekly meetings, online accountability daily. Um, honesty, authenticity. Leaders have to be trained and equipped. And it's Bible-based recovery curriculum. Here's a testimony from one guy that was in a recovery group from a few years ago, but it's, this is really a good one. My pornography addiction was destroying my life and marriage. There didn't seem, seem to be a way I could break free until I joined a Men of Integrity recovery and support group. Now, through the encouragement of other men and growing relationship with Christ, I am more than a conqueror. Praise God. We call our groups Men of Integrity because that's really the highest calling we can have on our lives. For leadership, we're developing distance learning as well as online location for the conference and beyond. Resources, a list of those that we use. I'm not going to get into too much. We do make available to all of our men's ministry leaders and also guys in men's ministry right now media that you can access much of the curriculum that we go through. Powerful stuff, many others there. Consulting, if you're a men's ministry leader, a pastor, an elder, and you want more, give me a call. Like I said, I'd be glad to talk to you and give you some direction on how to get things going. All right, we're going to try to wrap up here, expanding horizons. Last spring, we had a gathering of men's ministry leaders from the Southern Union come together, and we came out of it with a plan for the Southern Union, which is about 300,000 members. We had challenges that we noticed that all of us were facing, that there was no long-range plan. Men's ministry is a low priority in the church and mostly limited to large events. The budget and funding has been very low. On and on, many deficits that we were facing. So to come out of there with a strong plan, we came out with this Vision 2020. And I'm not going to go into all the details about it, but if you want more information about it, I'd be glad to share that with you. One of the things that we've decided is to go with the idea of Advent Men as our identifying name. We want to break down all the, all the men in our churches, where are they at? We want to reach out to each one of them intentionally and to create a brotherhood at a church level, get a reach through them through social media websites. The most important is personal contact, guys. We want to build and rebuild our men through the ways I've already been talking about. Build leaders, building community, and building a movement. That's the whole idea is to get more men engaged in this journey. So there's a 10-year plan in place. Um, there's going to be a Southern Union Men's Convention down in Florida, spring of 2021. Be looking for more information on that. And then... We need partners, especially those of you that are pastors and leaders. Engage. We need to build strong men that build strong families, that build a strong church. 
and let's get the job done. If you need to find out more information, please contact me, Marty Miller. And uh, here's my contact information. But I'd be glad to hear from you. And let's get more men involved in moving them into strength. And if that's you, welcome aboard. Thank you.